In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can make use of frame generation in practically all PC games if you're on a relatively modern AMD Radeon GPU. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can set up the brand new release of AMD's Fluid Motion Frames 2, which sees huge improvements over the original technology to visual quality, input latency, and expands support to other games. You can get Windows activated from as little as $16 using WhoKeys. Use the links in the description down below, choose from Windows 10, Windows 11, or Office. Use code PAN. 20 at checkout for an additional 25% off your order and to help support the channel. Pay via a secure payment method, including PayPal. Once purchased, your key will be available immediately. Head over to activate Windows, paste the key, will then have access to all Windows features and no more watermark. The Windows 10 keys will also allow you to upgrade to Windows 11. Use the links in the description down below and a massive thanks to WhoKeys for sponsoring this video. With all that out of the way, let's jump straight into how to set this up and use it on your own system. First off, we need to ensure that your GPU driver and GPU you're using supports AMD fluid motion frames too. At the time of recording this video, it's only currently available through a preview driver. If this video is a couple of days, weeks, or even months old at the time of you watching it, this is more than likely available across the main driver channel. So just ensure that your GPU drivers are fully up to date by going to the home section in the Radeon control panel going to the right hand side to driver and software and apply any and all updates that may be available inside of here. Alternatively, you can get access to the preview driver by heading to this link. You can also see up to date change logs of any additional features or changes they've made to this technology. Scroll down about halfway, you'll then be able to find the download, select this hyperlink, open it and install it like you typically would with any GPU driver. Now that you have access to AMD Fluid Motion Frames, we need to change a couple of settings. Start by navigating to the top left hand side to Gaming and go down to Graphics. You should then be able to see the new option for AMD Fluid Motion Frames 2. The only option that I would recommend that you enable with inside of here for now is actually going to be Radeon Anti-Lag. Utilizing Fluid Motion Frames 2 with Anti-Lag will provide you with the best input latency results when utilizing frame generation. There are some advanced options with Fluid Motion Frames 2, especially now with access to Radeon Chill, but we'll be covering those later in the video. So for now, just enable anti-lag. To measure the FPS before, after, and input latency penalty of utilizing frame generation, what you need to do is navigate to the performance tab, head over to metrics, head over to tracking, first of all going to the drop down menu for FPS, graphics API and selecting this small eye icon so we can monitor this in game. This is important because currently Fluid Motion Frames 2 does not support all graphics APIs. In the video I will be showing you a few workarounds for this for older titles that may not be natively supported. We'll then also go down to the eye icon for latency. This will then show us the frame generation lag. Go to the overlay section, go to enable the metrics overlay, you should then see this pop up on your screen. You can really customize this and go through all of the settings. Last but not least, to ensure that we can turn this both on and off so it doesn't become distracting, navigate over to the settings cog in the top right hand side, navigate down to hotkeys, find performance hotkeys, then find toggle performance overlay. By default this should be set to control, shift and O. Pressing those keys will allow you to instantly turn the overlay on or off so we can use it for monitoring and then get rid of it once we're started. That is it for all of the recommended setup, all we now need to do is head into Steam or any of your favourite game launchers and boot one of your favourite games. So for this example I've decided to go with GTA 5, you can use practically any game, but some games will benefit from this more because there will be a slight increase to overall input latency, so it's not really recommended to use it in hyper competitive multiplayer games, but anything else that you're mainly just playing to enjoy, I would 100% recommend at least trying this because you can turn it on and off so quickly. First off, I'd recommend going with Control Shift and O to turn on that metrics overlay, so you can see the sort of FPS that you're getting before we enable anything. When you're ready to enable frame generation on your game, press Alt and Z. If you run into issues pressing that on your game, you more than likely need to switch the game's full screen mode. In this instance, utilizing full screen isn't working for me, so I'm going to switch over to windowed borderless in this instance. The Radeon overlay should then open up on the left hand side. If you're not automatically brought into the individual game settings like I am here, navigate to the hamburger menu in the top left hand side, navigate down to home. You should then see the game in which you're playing under the current session, then select adjust game graphics. Instead of this menu, go to AMD Fluid Motion Frames 2 and switch this to on. With the brand new V2 release of Fluid Motion Frames, this will automatically detect the best search mode and performance mode depending on the resolution and hardware in which you have, so you can leave those settings all at auto. Pressing the hotkey again to get rid of the overlay, you can now see that frame generation has kicked in. We've seen about an 80 to 100% FPS increase. You can see the frame generation lag is detected at just 8 milliseconds in this instance. Because again, this has seen massive improvements over AMD's first implementation of fluid motion frames. Another massive bonus over the original version is when playing the game at a relatively fast pace, moving the mouse around quite fast or with the controller, you'll more than likely find that the frame generation doesn't really lose detection in about 99% of scenarios now, whereas before 
before you could make it instantly lose detection, taking you back to that original frame rate. So it's actually a super smooth and solid experience that you're going to get with Fluid Motion Frames 2, even in its very early state at the time of recording this video. If you were in an instance on a game where the native FPS is equal to or exceeding your monitor's refresh rate, in those scenarios there's no point in utilizing frame generation because you're just going to get the input latency decrease because there won't be any more noticeable perceived smoothness because your refresh rate simply can't display them. But in this instance, this is able to get me to about 220 FPS and it works with FreeSync, which has given me absolutely phenomenal results to turn frame generation off inside of the game to open the AMD overlay once again pressing alt and z heading down to AMD fluid motion frames and just switching it off it's just that quick and simple to turn on and off so in games that aren't hyper competitive or super latency sensitive or games which deliver native fps close to your monitor's maximum refresh rate or above you should be making use of this in nearly all of the games you play because it's just so quick and simple to turn on and off but what if you're in an instance where your game isn't detected on the left hand side and you can't gain access to the individual game settings to turn fluid motion frames on? So you head to the home menu and it doesn't say that you have a current session in a game and you have no option to adjust the graphics settings. If you do run into this, it's very simple to fix. Go to the hamburger menu, navigate down to games. You can choose to scan for the game once again. If the game still isn't detected, all you need to do is go to the top right hand side to the three dots, then select add a game. All you then need to do is navigate to the disk drive that the game that you wish to add is installed to. I can then find the gta5.exe and select open. Once that's then been added to the Radeon panel, you should then be able to find the individual graphic settings for that, where you can select the game, find the option for AMD Fluid Motion Frames 2 and enable it like we have been throughout this video. And that's how you can enable fluid motion frames in any supported games. But what if you want to make use of AMD's fluid motion frames 2 on a game that doesn't natively support it? For this example, I'm utilizing Borderlands 2. If we open up the AMD overlay to turn fluid motion frames on, you can see that we can't enable it. We're actually met with this warning, letting us know that it's inactive because the graphics API is not supported. Now, in some games, you may be able to change the graphics API, which is available in the in-game settings menu. On Steam, many games can utilize different graphics APIs with launch commands, but if I ever those options don't work. In single player titles like Borderlands 2, you can actually make use of DXVK. To install DXVK into an older single player title like Borderlands 2, first of all, simply close out of the game. Do a quick Google search for DXVK. You'll be brought to this GitHub at the top or follow this link. Scroll down, find the dxvk.tar.gz and select this to download. Open the file. If your game is a 32-bit game, you need to go with 32. If it's a 64-bit game, go with 64. Borderlands 2 is a 32-bit game, so I'll be going inside of this folder. Depending on the graphics API the game is using will depend on which of these files you need to install. As Borderlands is utilizing DirectX 9, we just need this file. You then need to go to the installation directory of the game you wish to install this to. On Steam, go to Properties, Installed Files, browse. We need to go to the part of the game directory where the game's exe is. For Borderlands, it's going to be found in binaries, win32. We can then see the borderlands2.exe. As it is a DirectX 9 title, I just need this file. You then need to drag this file into where the game is. Head back inside of Steam or wherever your game is installed and boot it. Opening the AMD overlay, you can now see the game is utilizing Vulkan. If we press Alt and Z to open the in-game overlay, head over to Fluid Motion Frames 2, we can actually enable this now. And as you can see on the right hand side, we've seen a noticeable FPS increase from enabling this. But that's how you can get up and running with AMD Fluid Motion Frames 2 on a game that doesn't natively support it. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you should utilize AMD's Fluid Motion Frames 2 in every game you play, because thankfully in the recent years, AMD's FSR 3 technology actually has frame generation available with it which you can find in the graphics menu of many popular newly released titles. In games that support baked in frame generation you would nearly always want to utilize the in-game frame generation instead of utilizing at a driver level like fluid motion frames too because this will give you better results for that individual game. Alongside lower latency optimizations of where the frame generation is providing you with a better looking and lower latency frame generation implementation in that game. It's not to say that AMD's Fluid Motion Frames 2 is bad, it just means if the game natively supports frame generation, you would want to utilize that first. As of the latest update, AMD Fluid Motion Frames 2 does also work with Radeon Chill to deliver you massive improvements to overall efficiency, consistency, and it also works with FreeSync. This may not be the best option for everyone, so on screen now I'll give two quick recommendations. If you're on a higher refresh rate monitor and you want the overall highest FPS possible and lowest input latency, I would recommend utilizing AMD's Fluid Motion Frames 2 with Radeon Anti-Lag. 
If you want to see massive improvements to overall efficiency, you don't mind slightly worse input latency, and just want a super silky smooth consistent experience, especially for those of you utilizing free sync monitors, then I would recommend experimenting around with utilizing AMD's Fluid Motion Frames 2 with Radeon Chill. Enabling Radeon Chill will limit the game's native FPS to half of your monitor's refresh rate. It will then utilize Fluid Motion Frames to get the other half of that frame rate back, but it will implement a maximum FPS cap with the frame generation to keep you all Always under the monitor's maximum refresh rate, which is fantastic for FreeSync. You will run into slightly worse input latency using that method, slightly more visual artifacts, but you could see a huge reduction in overall GPU power usage. So if the game you're playing, you just want a silky smooth experience getting all of the frames your monitor can actually display, and that experience sounds more appealing to you, then definitely try enabling Radeon Chill with it and see how you get on. If you don't like it, just disable Radeon Chill, go back to using Anti-Lag, and you're good to go. How does it compare to using no frame generation, FSR 3, or even Fluid Motion Frames 1? First up in the benchmarks, we have Forza Horizon 5. We have Stock versus AFMF1 and AFMF2. You can see that the added frame generation lag of Fluid Motion Frames 2 has seen a drastic cut when compared to the original version, alongside slightly higher FPS. Moving over to Black Myth Wukong. In this comparison, you can see quite clearly that Fluid Motion Frames 2 isn't delivering as impressive visual results as a baked in native frame generation method. This doesn't make it unusable, but it's a good comparison to see. To our first input latency test on First Descendant, utilizing our stock optimized settings, we're getting an average of 35.9 milliseconds input latency. Utilizing the game's built in FSR 3 frame generation, we're getting a total of 56.3 milliseconds of input latency. And utilizing AMD's Fluid Motion Frames 2, we're getting 54.6 milliseconds but with an increase of 9 milliseconds on top of that for the frame generation lag. Yes, utilizing frame generation does increase overall input latency, but especially for those slower games or if you're using a controller, sitting back and relaxing and playing a more single player experience, I would argue that the fluidity of the higher frames is actually worth it in many games you play. Moving over to Starfield for another input latency test. At stock we have 37 milliseconds. FSR 3 frame gen, which is baked into the game, 46 milliseconds. Fluid motion frames 1 is 67.9 milliseconds, plus an additional 23 milliseconds of frame gen lag. And finally, AMD's Fluid Motion Frames 2 is 51 milliseconds with an additional 10 milliseconds lag. In this example, you would always utilize FSR 3 as the baked inversion. The main comparison here is the difference between Fluid Motion Frames 1 and 2. There is a huge input latency cut down there whilst delivering slightly better visuals. This now moves us on to one of the only multiplayer games that I would really recommend that you potentially use this on, which is Escape from Tarkov. In this example, I am playing an online raid, and I'm playing in one of the most demanding maps, which is Streets. At stock, we're getting about 80 FPS, with a stock latency of 27.7 milliseconds. On the right-hand side, we're getting 160 frames per second, with 34.5 milliseconds of lag, plus an additional 8 milliseconds of frame gen lag. That does seem quite high, but in an example like this where we're mainly CPU bound, this is showing some phenomenal results. Yes, you won't get the input latency feel of that higher FPS, but at least makes it a lot more smoother. Now, if you happen to be skeptical about using any sort of frame generation because of the latency penalty that comes with it, with this last comparison on Cyberpunk 2077 on my RX 7600 at 1440p, we have the default stock settings that the game sets for this GPU, giving us 63 FPS with 43.8 milliseconds of latency. Doing some very basic optimizing to the in-game settings more towards the medium preset has allowed us to get up to 103 frames per second at 28.6 milliseconds of latency. For fluid motion frames 2 that's giving us 42.7 milliseconds plus 9 milliseconds of frame lag and FSR 3 which has just been baked into Cyberpunk delivers us a final latency of 41 milliseconds. If we compare the stock latency to the optimized plus FSR 3 frame gen numbers, we're actually at a reduction of 2 milliseconds of latency, even though we're using frame gen, and in this test, an additional 110 frames per second. So not only do you have better latency than stock default settings, you've got a huge increase to overall FPS as well. This won't be the case for every game, and yes, you will need to optimize your in-game settings first, and compared to the optimized latency, it will be higher, but if you're someone that just boots your favorite games, you don't go into the settings panel, going down to the medium or high preset, going with frame generation may actually give you 
better latency than you were experiencing before at a huge FPS increase. So should you be making use of AMD's Fluid Motion Frames 2? I would say it's worth giving a go in any games where you would like to see a noticeable FPS increase. If it acts up, has visual anomalies, or just doesn't feel right, press Alt and Z, turn it off, it takes two seconds. And for those of you playing older games or games that have engine FPS limits or outright break past a certain level of FPS, it's definitely a fantastic option which you can make use of even in older titles which aren't natively supported, utilizing something like DirectX VK like I showed you in this video. If you did find any value from this video, it would be deeply appreciated if you press the like button. Let me know in the comments down below what games you've been trying this on or improvements you would like to see come to Fluid Motion Frames 2 because it's always fantastic to hear from you guys and I'll see you in the next one.